And how, when did you start playing the violin? Oh, I started playing uh, piano first when I was eight years old, about five years, and then I did violin. And I picked it up, and I just loved the sound of it. And the bow moving my arm to make the sound, and then putting the fingers on the string. It was just very magical. Wow. Like did you take lessons right away, or did you yes. kind of... Well, uh, first I, there in the school, I had a little program and learned to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star at school. And then after that, decided to do a little talent show. So I um, got Matula Clark's Downtown. That fascinated me, so I picked that up and used a little finger puppet and a little skit with that. Oh, yeah? And yeah, then after that, I took form lessons. On private lessons on violin. Been doing it violin ever since then. And did you play like through junior high and high school? And yes, huh? college I orchestras at school, and, and then also did little recitals that the teachers would have. So I continued on through high school and uh, in college I was a music major in violin. So oh, gave great. a concert at the end. Where'd you go to school? Occidental College. I almost went to Oxford. Really? Almost, yeah. Oh. Almost as only counts in horseshoes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's in Eagle Rock, Los Angeles. Yeah. I used to swim and play water polo. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. And uh, at the time, the coach was recruiting me to try and go to Oxford. Oh, hey. Wow, that must have been good. I didn't go. <laughs> I didn't go. I went to Long Beach State, uh -huh. oh, where John Barcelona was. Yes, right. Because I wanted to study with him. Uh -huh. He's very good. Yeah, and we he, played in Master Symphony together. That's where I know John. Yeah. And that was a long time ago. That yeah, when I used to take lessons from him, he used to have a gold flute. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, wow. That's but really nice. He, he sold out and went, went to Miramatsu. Oh, I did. Yeah. So what kind of violin do you play? This is called Sonino. And it's um, modeled after Galliano. Um, this, and it was made in um, Italy in 1914. That violin right there? Yes, this one here. Wow. And I've had work done on it. It's 85 years old? Yes. I've had work done on the inside, and it, it sounds better all the time. When you play on it more, it opens it up. And so it's um, very fun to play. Wow. Violins are like big range and cost. Oh, yes. They, they can go anywhere from... Hundred dollars, which hundred fifty, which isn't that much for a violin at all. Right. Um, on up through a million, wow. millions of dollars. So. Have, you ever, have you ever played the red violin? Uh, no, I haven't <laughs> played that one. But I've tried some really fancy violins, and and they're all they're good. Um, oh. Obviously, they're good. But every violin has a different sound and different um, power to it. Some of them can be very very good, but have a sweet softer tone. And then other real fine ones have a bigger tone and a different type. Some people like to get violins for the investment. Um, some want to get it mostly for the sound. And you're talking to a player when you're playing right. the sound. Right, right. And how much do you, do you still play? I mean, obviously this is your profession and you teach and you play in orchestras and stuff. Do you play every day? Yes, I play violin every day. Um, I like to work on solo repertoire because I get a lot of satisfaction out of creating a musical style out of a piece or expression or doing a piece uh, for the technical reasons as well, the whole thing. Um, and then also I practice the music for concerts. Like we have a Baroque group that I'm in, we give concerts, so it's a group of five players. Uh, so I practice that music. And then for orchestras, like a chamber orchestra, uh, we have we played Mozart last weekend, and and you want to get just right, precise. So I'll practice that too. Wow. Do you practice? Uh, you still practice fundamentals? You know. Yes. Yes, I like to review uh, some bowing techniques and scales and arpeggios and double stops. Um, yeah. Especially a lot of pieces I have will have the technique within them, but um, it's still a good idea to review the basics even if it's for a short amount of time. Wow. And for someone that's just starting out, what amount of time do you recommend that they practice to start out with per day? It depends on the person's build and, and how strong they are. I would say um, that a half an hour is the best per day. 
Um, if you need to do 20 minutes instead because your hand gets tired or whatever, then you can do that. Um, but as you get uh, stronger and your concentration ability grows, which it does on an instrument, you get smarter because you're trying to do so many things at one time. And you break it down. Right. Uh, you get more analytical. Anyway, so then you build it up. Time, 45 minutes. And then as soon as you can do an hour, you do that. And if you're real serious and you've been doing it for a little while, for a while then you can practice more even. Wow. Yeah. Is there any uh, recordings or artists uh, that you recommend that up-and-coming violinists would listen to, help them? Um, I think that there are a variety of artists is a good idea. Listen to different styles, the way they play. Uh, I like to listen to Joshua Bell. He's very good. Um, I noticed that if you listen to different types of pieces, he plays one type lightly if it needs it. He'll play another type heavy when it needs it. I think that's good. And then I've always liked um, Perlman, Itzhak Perlman, and uh, Pinka Zuckerman. Um, and Sophie Mutter has her own style. I think that would be very helpful to listen to the differences. Did you see the movie The Red Violin? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was fascinating. It's not your usual Hollywoody movie. You know, yeah. It has its sort of artsy, craftsy type. And, was and there any, any truth to it, is it, or is it just a story? Well, I think there's truth to it. There is a man who's written something called The Fraud of the Violin, you know, and the idea is trying to switch labels and things like that. Um, and I think that, that uh, violins can be very much sought after. There's very fine ones. You go to auctions and they'll have um, displays of real nice ones and some people probably want the same one. So Like Stradivarius? Yeah, Stradivarius. Is, there's a, there are various other kinds, yeah. Blondarius. I, re I know when I first started studying uh, flute, uh, I used to listen a lot to uh, Claude Bowling, Jean-Pierre Rompal suite. And then also Claude Bowling came out with one with a violin. Mm -hmm. Or is it classical violin and jazz piano? Yes, yes. I think yes, it was I Zuckerman have. that right. played on it. Right, I have that recording and I, I played that piece, worked on playing it. Yeah. And there's one movement from viola, so I did that. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, that's a great piece. Yeah, I did the whole suite oh, also wonderful. on flute. Wow, it's not easy. No, no, actually I used it quite a bit to help my articulation because it was so strenuous, <laughs> especially for when I was just starting out, you know. So, so what do you have?